Now, as you can see this particular diagram, so this is basically a bronchus, okay, a bronchus which is showing characteristic non-caseating granuloma, which is characteristically present in sub-epithelial location, okay. So, what we can see over here, we can see a bronchus, you can see the lining over here, yes. So, this lining is the pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium, as we can appreciate and what you can see that they are composed, so what are these? These are the non-caseating or non uh, necrotizing granuloma. Now, what is a very characteristic feature? These granulomas, these are naked. Why we are calling them naked? Because they do not have a peripheral rim of lymphocytes or even if lymphocytes are present, they are very sparse. That is why they are called as a naked granuloma. So, what we can appreciate? We can see the presence of non-caseating granulomas which are naked. Okay, now what are these granulomas composed of? As you can appreciate over here, they are composed of clustered epithelioid macrophages. These are nothing but activated macrophages, activated by the release of interferon gamma. So, we can see clustered epithelioid macrophages which are basically forming this particular granuloma. Along with that, what else we can see? We can see the presence of giant cells. So, these granulomas are containing giant cells and these giant cells may also be present outside the granulomas as we can appreciate. So, we can see the presence of the giant cells. Sometimes these giant cells can uh, contain certain inclusions like Schaumann bodies as you can see the presence of lamellated concretions comprising of calcium and other proteins as well as they can be in the form of star shaped stellate inclusions. In that case we call them as asteroid bodies and around that in long standing sarcoidosis around these granulomas you can see Hyaline fibrous rimming, you can see hyaline fibrous rimming as we can appreciate in this diagram. So, what are the five things that we are seeing? We are seeing characteristic non-caseating, non-necrotizing granulomas classically present in sub-epithelial location in the bronchus or in the, in, in, in the respiratory tract as you can appreciate over here. They are composed of clustered epithelioid macrophages activated by interferon gamma. Okay, then we are seeing the presence of giant cells which can show shaman bodies as well as asteroid bodies. We can also see that these are naked granulomas. So, the granulomas, they are not having any kind of lymphocytic rimming or very sparse lymphocytes are there. And lastly, in long standing granulomas, you can see the characteristic hyaline fibrous rimming around the granuloma. So, this is the morphological feature of uh, 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 sarcoidosis. Myself, Dr. Gibran Amal presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important session. Today, as you can see, we are going to discuss an important exam topic that is sarcoidosis. So, let us begin by looking at a very important exam question. So, basically a 25 year old black woman presented with a 3 month history of cough and shortness of breath on exertion. Chest x-ray reveals enlargement of hilar and mediastinal lymph node. Laboratory studies show elevated serum levels of angiotensin converting enzyme and increase in 24 hour urine calcium excretion. An open lung biopsy is shown in the image as you can appreciate over here. Okay. Stains for microorganism in the tissue, they are negative. So, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So, I know this question seems a little bit difficult now, but let us first read about sarcoidosis in details and we are going to come back to address this particular question at the end of this particular video. So, stay tuned till the end. So, without wasting any time, let us begin with today's topic of discussion that is sarcoidosis. So, sarcoidosis, if you see, it is a systemic granulomatous disease of unknown etiology which is involving many tissues and organs. It is usually affecting young adults, usually in the age range of 20 to 40 years. Usually, the individuals are less than 40 years, but they may affect any age group. There, there is a predilection to involve females more than males. The most common clinical presentation if you see is bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy or parenchymal lung involvement in the form of ILD. Okay, In 90% of the cases if you see, the most common presentation is bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy or parenchymal lung involvement. The next most common involvement if you see is that of the eyes and the skin. So, there are eye and skin lesions. Now, the disease is very common in African Americans but they are rare in Chinese and Southeast Asians. As such, if you see, they have a worldwide distribution. 
it is characterized sarcoidosis is characterized by the presence of non caseating or non necrotizing naked granulomas in all the tissues okay but remember one thing that such non caseating granulomas can also be seen in mycobacterium tubercular infections fungal infections as well as in berylliosis therefore non caseating granulomas they are not specific for sarcoidosis that is the reason sarcoidosis is mainly a diagnosis of exclusion well all other tests are coming out to be negative and you are getting a non caseating granuloma then you can think in terms of sarcoidosis so it is a diagnosis of exclusion so these are very very important terms okay it's a diagnosis of exclusion coming to the pathogenesis of sarcoidosis largely the etiology of sarcoidosis is unknown it is hypothesized as a disease of disordered immune regulation that is number 1 and secondly it happens in genetically predisposed individuals so there are two important things over here either there is immune abnormalities or there is a genetic component which is associated with the pathogenesis of sarcoidosis so number 1 we are going to see what are the immune abnormalities that we observe in sarcoidosis so there is intra alveolar and interstitial accumulation of cd4 plus t cells resulting in cd4 plus cd8 plus uh, t cell ratio between 5 is to 1 to 15 is to 1 so the amount of cd4 plus t cells are quite great or they are very high in comparison to cd8 plus and therefore the ratio is altered so the ratio is in the range of 5 is to 1 to 15 is to 1 remember it is the cd4 plus helper t cells which is characteristically involved in sarcoidosis now expansion of t cell subset supports uh, the, the hypothesis that there is antigen driven proliferation so this excessive amount of cd4 plus t cell proliferation occurs in response to some antigen which is unknown okay which is unknown antigen okay so the first important immune abnormality is excessive amount of intra alveolar and interstitial accumulation of cd4 plus t cell to such an extent that the cd4 plus cd8 plus t cell ratio is altered in the range of 5 is to 1 to 15 is to 1 okay so mainly the cd4 plus helper t cells are the ones which are involved okay second important thing is these cells they not only expand but they are also going to release certain cytokines so there is an excessive amount of t helper 1 derived cytokines mainly interleukin number 2 which is helping towards further t cell expansion and number 2 they release interferon gamma they are leading to macrophage activation and their conversion into epithelioid cell okay so there is an excessive amount of t helper 1 cell derived cytokine mainly interleukin 2 which is responsible for t cell expansion and interferon gamma which is leading to macrophage activation also there is an excessive amount of several cytokines in the local environment so in the local environment excessive amount of certain cytokines can also be seen which are those cytokines they are interleukin 8 okay tnf and mip 1 alpha okay so what do these uh, things do mainly remember that these cytokines they help in recruitment of additional t cells and monocytes and they also contribute towards the formation of granuloma now because there are lots of activated macrophages so they release excessive amount of tnf that is the tumor necrosis factor they can be seen in high levels in such patients and the levels of tnf in bronchoalveolar lavage fluid it is a marker of disease activity again an important exam question so which uh, cytokine is acting as a marker of disease activity basically the tnf okay high levels of tnf is acting as a marker of disease activity So, what are the other immune abnormalities that you are going to see? There is an impaired dendritic cell function. There is energy. There is energy. That means failure to respond to common skin antigens. Example, candida or TB purified protein derivatives. So, if you are using a purified protein derivatives like TB or candida, okay. For example, if you are carrying out Mantoux test, okay, then such individual will not show any kind of reaction or induration. They will be same. okay along with that they also show polyclonal hyper gamma globulinemia so energy to common skin antigens like the purified protein derivatives of candida or tb or also they will show polyclonal hyper gamma globulinemia so these are all the immune based abnormalities that you will observe in case of sarcoidosis okay another thing is sarcoidosis is happening in certain genetically predisposed individuals so sarcoidosis it is more common in certain genetically predisposed individuals which are having hla gen genotypes mainly hla a1 and hla b8 so individuals with such hla genotype they are predisposed to developing sarcoidosis 
Now coming to the morphology of sarcoidosis. So virtually remember every organ in the body is involved by sarcoidosis. The characteristic feature in sarcoidosis is the presence of a non-caseating, okay, non-caseating or non-necrotizing naked granuloma. Okay, so every term over here has a meaning. So they have a non-caseating, non-necrotizing naked granulomas which are composed of tightly clustered epithelioid macrophages okay tightly clustered epithelioid macrophages often with giant cells okay often with giant cells which is surrounded by fibrous rim that is hyaline fibrous scar okay which is surrounded by a fibrous rim that is hyaline fibrous scar what is the meaning of naked granuloma what is naked naked means granulomas are lacking peripheral limb, uh, rim of lymphocytes or they have very less or sparse amount of lymphocytes okay that is why we call it as a naked granuloma so many times we are asking this question to the students but they don't know they just mug up so what is the meaning of a naked granuloma is very very important now giant cells giant cells in around 60 percent of the cases the giant cells so this giant cells basically whatever giant cell that we are talking about in around 60% of the cases, they can contain certain bodies. So, what are those bodies? Number one, for example, the giant cells, they can contain what is known as a Schaumann bodies, okay, which is completely like this, okay, which is like a concretions, calcified concretions, okay, they are called as Schaumann bodies. Schaumann bodies, they are nothing but they are laminated concretions which are composed of calcium and protein. So, these are laminated concretions composed of calcium and protein so these are what is known as the shaman bodies so giant cells uh, sometimes they contain shaman bodies okay which are nothing but laminated concretions composed of calcium and proteins not only that sometimes they also contain asbestos bodies these are nothing but star shaped inclusions okay these are star shaped or stellate inclusion remember both shaman and asbestos bodies remember they are characteristic of sarcoidosis but they are not pathognomonic of sarcoidosis that means it is not uh, found only in sarcoidosis okay they may be seen in other conditions also because these shaman and asbestos bodies they may be encountered in other granulomatous disease for example like tuberculosis so this line again becomes very important so these bodies they are characteristic but they are not pathognomonic of sarcoidosis now, as you can see this particular diagram, so this is basically a bronchus, okay, a bronchus which is showing characteristic non-caseating granuloma, which is characteristically present in sub-epithelial location, okay. So, what we can see over here, we can see a bronchus, you can see the lining over here, yes. So, this lining is the pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium, as we can appreciate and what you can see that they are composed. So, what are these? These are the non-caseating or non uh, necrotizing granuloma now what is a very characteristic feature these granulomas these are naked why we are calling them naked because they do not have a peripheral rim of lymphocytes or even if lymphocytes are present they are very sparse that is why they are called as a naked granuloma so what we can appreciate we can see the presence of non-caseating granulomas which are naked Okay, now what are these granulomas composed of? As you can appreciate over here, they are composed of clustered epithelioid macrophages. These are nothing but activated macrophages, activated by the release of interferon gamma. So, we can see clustered epithelioid macrophages which are basically forming this particular granuloma. Along with that, what else we can see? We can see the presence of giant cells so these granulomas are containing giant cells and these giant cells may also be present outside the granulomas as we can appreciate so we can see the presence of the giant cells sometimes these giant cells can uh, contain certain inclusions like shaman bodies as you can see the presence of lamellated concretions comprising of calcium and other proteins as well as they can be in the form of star shaped stellate inclusions in that case we call them as asteroid bodies and around that in long standing sarcoidosis around these granulomas you can see hyaline fibrous rimming you can see hyaline fibrous rimming as we can appreciate in this diagram 
So what are the five things that we are seeing? We are seeing characteristic non-caseating, non-necrotizing granulomas classically present in sub-epithelial location in the bronchus or in the, in, in, in the respiratory tract as you can appreciate over here. They are composed of clustered epithelioid macrophages activated by interferon gamma. Okay, then we are seeing the presence of giant cells which can show shaman bodies as well as asteroid bodies. We can also see that these are naked granulomas. So, the granulomas, they are not having any kind of lymphocytic rimming or very sparse lymphocytes are there. And lastly, in long-standing granulomas, you can see the characteristic hyaline fibrous rimming around the granuloma. So, this is the morphological feature of uh, 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 sarcoidosis.